Today, I'm talking about the Hoka Bondi 6 after 100 miles. Seven point nine four miles, nine minutes, eight seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty six beats per minute, taking it nice and easy today, getting my miles in on the run commute home. And with today's run commute, uh, I was able to get the Hoka Bondi six to the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I give you my more detailed thoughts on this shoe after one hundred miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review, uh, so I didn't have to pay for it. However, no one's paying me to use this shoe or to make this video, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or this footage. So you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Bondi 6 after 100 miles. Now this is Hoka's max cushion shoe, the most EVA foam that they put in any of their road shoes. It's the hoka yest of the Hoka shoes. And for me, someone who likes shoes with a little bit less cushioning and likes to be able to feel the road a little bit more, it has been a very interesting experience indeed. Now it started off as seeming like a little bit of a heavy-ish kind of shoe. Uh, it's 10.9 ounces, uh, that's what it's listed at uh, for my size nine, uh, which puts it interestingly at the same weight or actually a little bit lighter than the Ultra Boost 19 just for comparison purposes in terms of weight but it is a little bit heavier than I normally like for a shoe and the stack height certainly felt very high I'm not sure if it's actually that much higher than some of the shoes that I've raced in but it felt really high uh, of a stack height shoe when I first put it on it wasn't until about 30 or even maybe 40 miles into it where the shoe really started to change that stack height started to soften up and at that point then every time I ran in it, uh, it was a little bit mushier, but in a really good way, in a way that actually reminded me a lot of what it felt like to run in the Ultra Boost 4.0, the Ultra Boost from a couple of years ago now, which is a shoe that I actually really liked in for this genre of Max Cushion. So who's Max Cushion really for? Uh, it's a type of running shoe that's for uh, a couple of types of purposes. The two that mainly come to mind for me is for people that are looking for a shoe that's gonna help them push distance rather than necessarily pace. People that are looking for uh, something that is going to help them soak up all the road miles. The other kind of person I think it's for is for someone that needs something that's a little bit easier on their joints. Uh, so someone that's maybe having some knee pain or knee issues and wants something that's gonna be, again, able to soak up some of that impact, the pounding from all those road miles. That's who this max cushion type of shoe is really for. Now, what I felt after the shoe softened a little bit was that the shoe still had a lot of that stack height and still kind of gave me that kind of insulated from the road feeling, which I'm not a huge fan of. But with that, after that 30 or 40 mile mark is that the kind of I felt like almost like the top layer of the EVA foam had compressed enough that I felt like I was getting a lot more of a softer landing with each stride in a very comfortable way. Now, usually the price for that and what I felt in, for example, the Ultra Boost 4.0 was that the price for that was a lot of speed and a lot of extra effort. And so in that way, I felt like the Ultra Boost 4.0 was a good shoe to run in and a good recovery shoe. But I didn't really like it for the other use case of like a max cushion shoe, which is to kind of push mileage because I felt like I was working a little bit harder to run in that shoe. 
I didn't really feel that with this shoe. I'm getting all that softness. I'm getting kind of like that softer, easier landing, uh, but I'm still able to move relatively quickly without any extra effort. So there wasn't that kind of speed penalty that came with all the cushioning in the shoe, which I thought was really great, but it wasn't a perfect shoe for me. I still kind of at times felt like the shoe was clunky. So sometimes I would get in the shoe and I would feel like kind of Darth Vader running where it just kind of felt like a little bit herky jerky. And other times I just felt like I was really uh, in sync with the shoe and we were getting into a really great rhythm. I felt the softness, I felt the cushioning, it felt really plush, almost as if there were like ortholite in here or something like memory foam. Uh, but I was still able to move and get through the gait cycle really quickly. The way that they've kind of designed the geometry of the shoe lends itself to being a high stack height shoe, a max cushion shoe, but still not letting you get bogged down in any one part of the gait cycle. So that was magnificent when it happened. So it would just kind of come and go. I would feel it kind of, uh, intermittently and I don't really know why that was. I wish I could kind of dial that in more so that I could get a higher percentage of the rhythm and the flow of the Bondi 6 rather than some of the clunkiness, but it would kind of just come and go and I can't really explain when or why I would feel what, but that was kind of like the, the duality of the shoe, the two sides to it. Um, and it possibly is because I think I had some fit issues with the shoe. So when I first got the shoe, it did give me a little bit of blistering. Now granted, I took it out of the box and took it for like a 13 mile run, an 11 mile run, and then like a 15 mile run, like in three days in a row. I think that's kind of what I did. So not a normal way like a person would kind of break in a shoe. So I did get a little bit of blistering in there. Um, but even then over time, what I've noticed is on the right foot, this is the left shoe, but on my right foot, right around here, right at that point above where the shoe is kind of ends touching your foot, I got uh, a little bit of soreness and tenderness every time I ran in the shoe. And it's almost as if like this part of the shoe were digging into me. It didn't happen on my left foot. It happened definitely on my right, which leads me to think that maybe it's a fit issue, but most likely that's in conjunction with kind of something that's going on with my foot. My right foot tends to kind of, uh, kick out a little bit as I run, uh, kind of like a, a duck would run. And so uh, that's probably what's making myself susceptible to that. And I think that it becomes exacerbated because the shoe has kind of a wide platform. And so uh, it kind of makes your foot land in a certain way. And so if you look at the wear pattern on the back right heel, it's very different than the wear pattern on the back left heel in terms of where the rubber is hitting the road. And I think that that's kind of showing that the way my foot is hitting is maybe causing some irritation right in that, in that point. Uh, there's other fit issues as well. For a max cushion shoe, I feel like either it's not snug enough or it's too loose. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. It, it may be both. Uh, and so I, one thing that I notice is when I reach for a, a max cushion shoe, it's, I usually want it on a recovery day when my feet are feeling a little bit beat up, when my body's feeling a little bit beat up. And when I put my foot into a max cushion shoe, what I want is just like a feeling of, ah, it feels nice to be in it. I always, I didn't really feel that with this shoe. A lot of times I was feeling kind of like the edges of the toe box. I don't have a wide foot, but I felt kind of uh, a little bit of tension and a little bit of pressure as I was getting into the shoe. Once I started running, everything kind of loosened up. I loosened up, the shoe loosens up, everything feels good. Uh, but it was something that I noticed. And in the right hand, side. I think uh, I already mentioned that I had kind of the rubbing issue here, but I had analogous kind of issues uh, with the toe box feeling more snug than it should, I think, for a recovery shoe. But at the same time, I also think that maybe some of the issues I was feeling in my right foot is because as the shoe compresses and as that top layer kind of gets softer, I don't know if it's a top layer or if it's just the entire layer of the midsole is getting softer. I felt like maybe I'm sliding around inside the shoe a little bit. So I couldn't get it to feel completely dialed in. I don't like it when I can identify a problem and can't like provide a solution, but I don't really know how to, to kind of fix that. It wasn't a huge deal. It was very easy for me to get to a hundred miles in this shoe. And definitely on some of the days where I was working harder and faster in other shoes, the next morning I would say, you know what, I really am looking forward to going for a run in the Bondi 6 because it is going to be really comfortable and really relaxing overall on my feet. 
In terms of other aspects, wrapping up the 100 mile kind of review on this shoe, I will say that the upper is holding up fantastically well. It hardly looks like it's been worn at all. Uh, and the midsole and outsole look fantastic as well. And even the rubber, other than like my main hot spot back here in the back outer portion of my heel, uh, looks absolutely magnificent on, on each shoe. Uh, and usually I get a little bit of wear right under the ball of my feet in the forefoot, uh, but I'm not hardly seeing any of that at all. So the rubber is holding up fantastically well. Uh, the shoe is holding up well. Now that the shoe has broken in, it's been an absolute pleasure to run my recovery miles in these for those times when I can really get into the rhythm. The other times when it's clunky, it's just a little bit it just seems like a max cushion shoe that maybe I'm not a huge fan of, but when I can get in that rhythm, it just feels so smooth. And I really love that sensation about this shoe. So I think that if you're looking in the max cushion genre, this is something that you should definitely put into your consideration. Uh, if you have any more questions about the Bondi 6, uh, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Uh, before I go, I do want to remind you guys about the charity runner for this week. This week, it's Thomas Conabare, who's going to be running the London Marathon and raising money for the Meningitis Research Foundation. I was happy to donate $70 to Thomas's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?